Shabbat Shalom and welcome to Teshuvah Bible Studies. My name is Van and we're doing uh, the third part of this week's Torah portion. On the first part, we talk a lot about uh, Elohim's kingdom and what it actually means to be part of a kingdom. In the second part, we talked about contentment and what it means to be content in whatever situation you are. And we talked, uh, we ended with that verse that uh, talks about being uh, being able to do all things in Christ who gives us strength in Philippians chapter 4. But if we read it in context, it's actually talking about being content, meaning that you can do all things, whether it is living in poverty or being hungry or whatever the situation may be, he will strengthen you to go through that. Of course, it doesn't mean that we should uh, not fight to be able to get out of that situation but we should be content in whatever uh, situation we are in life, knowing that he is just, that he is good, and he's gonna be able to deliver us from that situation or strengthen us to endure it until we get that deliverance. So now we're gonna talk about rebellion, witchcraft, and idolatry, which is the second part of this portion, and what exactly they have in common. These words don't seem like there is any connection on them. When we say them in English, but when we study the root words in Hebrew, we can see that they are all tied together. They all have, um, they are tied and, and their meanings uh, do the right, you know, they do uh, touch on each other. They're, they're del del derivatives is the word that I was looking for, derivatives of each other. So when we study them uh, in context, right? So why is rebellion serious in the eyes of Elohim? We, uh, number 16 verses 10 and 11 we read this on the last uh, part talks about uh, how rebellion can oftentimes be against Elohim himself versus the following this is Moses talking to Korah and the people who are rebelling against him and he says he has brought you and all your fellow Levites near himself but now you are trying to get the priesthood too it is against Elohim that you all have, you and all your followers have band together. Who is Aaron that you should grumble against him? So we can see here that even though they were grumbling against Elohim's representative or the leadership here on earth, uh, the root of it is that they were actually rebelling against Elohim himself. When we rebel against any person in a position of authority that was placed there by Elohim. We are rebelling against him. So this should be taken very seriously. And a perfect example of what not what to do in a situation like this is in the life of King David. Why do I use want to use King David as an example? Because uh, King David was in a position to rebel, but he chose not to, right? He was the rightful king. We can see here that in um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, uh, Samuel the prophet uh, anoints King David to be Elohim's chosen king for the nation of Israel. However, at that time, uh, Saul was still uh, on the throne. He was still the leader of the nation. And though uh, uh, David was anointed, he didn't... Um, he didn't have the position yet. He did, you know, he was waiting on Elohim to actually put him in that position. He had a lot of opportunities to take that position by force, but he chose not to do it. And he's going to give the reasons, right? So in First Ch uh, Samuel chapter twenty-four, and again in chapters twenty-six to thirty-one, we see here opportunities and descriptions. Uh, that King David had the opportunity to kill Saul and take the throne and be able to uh, take the position of king that was rightfully his at that point. He's act he actually had the right to be king, but he did not take those opportunities to do it by force. He understood that he needed to wait on Elohim to remove Saul and then raise himself to the correct position at the correct way and the correct time. 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 10, verse 10 says the following, You can be sure that Adonai will strike Saul down. Perhaps he will die a natural death, 
or he will go into battle and be killed. May Adonai keep me from doing anything to harm his anointed king. So David here knew that even though he was anointed by the prophet uh, Samuel to be king and he was the rightful king, uh, Saul was still in that position and he was waiting for Elohim to remove him from that position. And he was actually patient enough to know that, you know, if, he, if it was for him to die of natural causes, in other words, maybe it would have taken 20, 30, 40 years, who knows, uh, for Saul to die. But he wanted nothing to do with it. He wanted nothing to, uh, to do as far as contributing to that death or touching uh, someone that Elohim put in the position of king. He let, he trusted Elohim and he wanted Elohim to do this at the right time, the right way. So he, you know, he's a perfect example of what, even though he had the right to do it, he's a perfect example of how not to rebel and to actually trust and rely on Elohim to do his part. He understood that no one can do any harm to Adonai's anointed and not be guilty. That's 1 Samuel uh, chapter 26, verse 9, which is actually a verse before the one I read. So uh, David was actually very wise and very conscious that Elohim was still sovereign. He was still in control and that anything that he did to uh, assist or go over the authority of Elohim would be incorrect. He should not do it. So if you are in a congregation or a group of people and you are unhappy with the current leadership, there are two things that you could actually do uh, that would be okay in those situations because we have free will. We don't have to actually um, do anything outside our will, but we have to understand that whatever we do, we also have to be ready to reap the consequences of our, of our free will, of our decisions, right? So the two things that you can do that would not uh, let you suffer uh, ill consequences or to actually rebel against Elohim himself would be you can bring it before Elohim in prayer and he will remove the leader if that's his will. So like if you have somebody in your congregation or someone in a leadership position in your group of people that you are worshiping Elohim or serving Elohim and you don't agree with that person, you can pray about that person's behavior to Elohim. And if it is indeed something that Elohim wants to do, he will remove that person from that position if you are correct. The second thing you can do, you can actually leave the group. Like I said, you don't have to stay in a group that is doing the wrong thing. In fact, we're not supposed to do that, right? If we're in a, uh, if we could see that the leader is blatantly uh, not teaching Elohim's way, not teaching Torah correctly and doing, you know, living a life that is showing that he's, you know, doing the wrong thing. In other words, let's say you, your leader is willfully uh, committing adultery and he doesn't want to repent. And you see that you should actually leave. You shouldn't be following somebody who's doing that. You should be, um, we should be setting ourselves apart and, and, and be with a group of people that are also setting themselves apart. So if they're teaching something that's incorrect or they're doing things that are incorrect, not only I think you should leave, but I think it's, it's something that would be beneficial and it's actually something that would be appropriate to leave, right? Of course, the first option is always there. You should always pray for that person. And you, you may also even approach that person and try to correct that person privately. But what you should never do you should never do is to raise up a campaign and rebel against that person or try to overtake that authority without Elohim's consent because that is literally what rebellion is. So that's not an option or it shouldn't be an option. But if you do that, you have to also know that you may be rebelling against Elohim and you will suffer the consequences like Korah did. So <clears throat> can anyone think of a similar campaign in ancient history, right? <laughs> We already uh, said this on the last uh, part where uh, someone who uses Elohim's words to, to fit his own agenda and to trick people into following him, Hasatan 
the enemy, the serpent, right? But he also was the first one to rebel against Elohim in heaven. He raised up a rebellion there as well. He did exactly what Korah did here against Elohim himself, right? Look what he says, um, Isaiah 14, verses 13 and 14, kind of sums up his attitude, sums up what uh, Hasatan, our enemy, our adversary, had in his heart. This is Elohim, uh, the prophet Isaiah speaking uh, for Elohim's behalf. He said, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of Elohim. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the cloud. I will make myself like the Most High. This was Hasatan. That's what he had in his heart. And of course, we know the consequence and the end of that rebellion was him getting uh, removed from heaven, removed from Elohim's uh, presence and judged. He was the first to rebel, but he also enticed many to follow him. The scripture says that about one third of the angels joined uh, Hasatan in this rebellion. So he was probably very convincing. He probably even used Elohim's own words and twisted his own words to get these many of Elohim's creation to also fall and rebel. But the interesting thing is does, it doesn't matter who started the rebellion, they all got the same consequence. The consequence of those who follow Hasatan was the same as his own consequence. So be very careful who you follow. Be, be very careful uh, before you join any type of rebellion. Be very careful uh, what you say or do against certain uh, people, especially Elohim's people, right? People who claim to be following Elohim. Revelation 12 verse 9 says the following, The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient, ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who led the whole world astray. He was hurled to earth and his angels with him. So we can see here that the consequence, when it was time to suffer the consequence for his rebellion, all those who follow him had the same consequence. He was hurled from, to the earth and so were the angels that followed him. So what's the connection? What's the connection here? I haven't even gotten to the connection between rebellion, witchcraft, and idolatry, idolatry right? What does rebellion have to do with that? We, we were just talking about King David and King Saul. And this is actually in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, where, actually, where Elohim actually judges King Saul for rebellion. And he said, the rebellion is like witchcraft, which in some translations says the sin of divination. Um, and arrogance is like the evil or of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Elohim, he has rejected you as king. And he was talking to, um, this is Samuel talking to King Saul uh, about uh, his rebellion. In Hebrew, the word witchcraft, which is kesem, um, which also means divination, is seeking knowledge outside the creator. So whenever you're seeking knowledge from other Elohims or outside Elohim's word, you're actually practicing witchcraft, kesem. And it is also directly tied to idolatry and also to false prophecy. So we can see that kesem is the word that's used for a divination, oracle, which is usually when you're seeking prophets or seers from other entities, divination, and is also witchcraft. So they're all tied together. A rebellion is equivalent to that. It's also a use, a word that was used to describe Balaam, which is that false prophet who was called to curse Israel. So it was this prophet that actually spoke to other Elohims, other gods, false gods, but he also spoke to the creator. And it's probably that story that everybody knows where the, the donkey stopped him so that he could listen to the real Elohim. <laughs> and at the end, he was not able to curse Israel, but he was, uh, he was actually uh, blessed Israel when he opened his mouth. But um, the point is that it is tied to this false prophet. It's divination and witchcraft is 
tied to false prophets and false prophecy. So tying it all together and so we can conclude this week's uh, portion, we want to stay away from any type of rebellion, especially if it's against Elohim's people. In today's culture especially, we see this happening a lot. We see people having entire YouTube channels or uh, you know, channels that are exposing people, exposing the truth. We're not called to do that. We're not called to uh, look down on other people, especially people who claim to be servants of Elohim. If we don't know them personally and we're not able to see the fruit or see the actual rebellion, we're not, we should not join in that. We should not join in those people who are attacking other followers of Yeshua or other followers of Elohim. So don't participate in these groups at all. Don't spend, don't participate in groups that spend time putting other people down, putting, or, you know, showing how those people are wrong because we are all wrong in a, you know, in a one time or another, we're all wrong. And of course, these people who are getting recorded and put on social media, we're going to focus on that moment where they made a mistake. But that doesn't reflect their entire lives. It doesn't reflect, we don't know what they're, what's going on in their heart or in their minds. So when we actually jump into those groups that are criticizing these people or putting them down, we're running a very large um, chance of actually be rebellious against Elohim himself. Because if those people happen to have made a mistake, but their heart and their mind and their lives uh, do follow Elohim, do um, they, they are trying to do their best to follow Elohim. And we jump into that bandwagon, we're actually uh, running a huge risk of being rebellious against Elohim himself. So unless you're 100% certain that you are directed to do this by Elohim himself, I would not risk it. Don't be envious of other people's success. A lot of times and a lot of these attacks come when people are actually gaining traction or gaining popularity. And then everybody else who is not in that position, they start saying, oh, he's sold out or he's doing something. Uh, and you know that's what we think because Deep down inside, we probably have a little bit of envy. We probably wish we could be in that position. So don't be envious of other people's success, especially if there are people who are proclaiming the truth or you know, teaching scripture or pointing people to Elohim. We should be celebrating those victories. We should be, we should be celebrating those people's success, not being envious and trying to uh, knock them down. Don't speak evil against anyone anyone I, I mean we talked about Lashon Hara the last three uh Torah portions this one doesn't happen to be Lashon Hara but it's something that I've learned you know don't speak evil of anyone because you don't know what's going on in their lives you don't know the circumstances you know what's going on in their hearts it is hard enough to follow Elohim and stay in the path so concentrate on that concentrate on your own life concentrating in being the light being an example for others not putting people down or speaking evil against them. If you suspect that someone is leading people astray, the best thing you can do is pray for that person, pray for them, and allow Elohim to deal with them or to use you in an appropriate way, which would, again, would be like, if you know that person personally, you can approach that person in private and try to talk to that person and tell them what's going on. And as scripture says, right, if you win, if you win them that way, you want a brother, and if, you, if, if that person can insist on staying in their error, you could bring more other, te, uh, other uh, witnesses and try to convince them that way. But you're not the person who is going to judge them. Elohim is the one who is the perfect and just God, Elohim. So he's the one that's gonna deal with those people, right? To be in a rebellion against Elohim is not to be in good company, right? <laughs> We already talked about a couple of people or a couple of entities or a couple of groups of people who rebel against Elohim, right? Hasatan and his angels, Cain rebelled, uh, Korah and his followers, which is in this portion, Balaam, all of these people are in that list and you don't wanna be part of that list. You don't wanna join that list, right? So don't let your name be here as part of this group. <laughs> 
avoid that group at all costs, right? Just focus on doing your best, focus on studying Torah, focus on following Yeshua, focus on your own fruit and your own testimony. Don't focus on other people and what they're doing. If you focus on yourself, you're gonna do well and Elohim is gonna honor you and lift you up when the time is due. All right, let's end this, uh, this week's Torah portion with this verse which actually kind of ties everything together because it does talk about these uh, rebellious people that I just mentioned, right? It's in Jude chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. It says, Woe to them, woe to them. They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These people are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you, without the slightest qualm shepherds who feed only themselves they are clouds without rain blown alone by the wind autumn trees without fruit and un uprooted twice dead now is not a group of people that i want to be part of right if you want to be part of a group of people be part of the group of people that are in hebrews 11 <laughs> the champions of the faith you don't want to become part uh, of the list of people who are rebellious. So with that, I'll end this week's story portion. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you applied this truth into your life and uh, have a blessed week. And I'll see you guys next week. Shalom. Love you guys. God bless.